number is four, by the way. Sorry. Um, okay. By a show of hands, who here has ever fainted during a blood draw? Did you know that when you fainted, you had up to a 25% chance of having convulsions and a 6% chance of having a full-on seizure? That's according to a study from the University of Alberta. Blood draws are normally harmless procedures, but when people faint, they can have they can get seriously injured or have scary side effects like seizures. Um, today, I'm going to teach you how to prepare for a blood draw so that you can ensure, so that we can prevent vasovagal syncope or fainting during a blood draw from happening to you. Um, you may be asking why I'm qualified to teach you this. My name is Sarah Blackburn. I'm a licensed phlebotomist with four years experience practicing and teaching phlebotomy. Um, I've performed thousands of blood draws and um, throughout the past four years, I've only had one patient faint on me. For context, the Center for Phlebotomy Education reports fainting 2.5% of the time with blood draws. My track record with fainting is less than 0.01%. There are tons of things you can do to help prevent, faint, uh, per, help prevent fainting during blood draws, but today we're going to focus on the three things that are gonna give you the most success. Um, hydrating well, keeping warm, and reclining back. Um, if you follow these three steps, I guarantee you're going to have a smoother blood draw experience. Uh, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is hydrate well. Hydrating is really key when it comes to blood draws. Your blood is made of about 50% water. Um, so when you're dehydrated, the total volume of blood in your body decreases and your veins tend to shrink up and get smaller. I'm so sorry, guys. That's true, though. <laughs> um, <laughs> I get really nervous. I'm sorry. Um, yes. Um, but when you're hydrated well, your veins swell up and they get larger, and it makes it easier for the phlebotomist to find and hit your veins. Um, when you get that decreased blood volume from dehydration, that lowers your blood pressure, which increases your chances of fainting. Um, the good news is hydrating well is relatively easy to do. Um, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Hydrating well is relatively easy to do. Um, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh, uh, and water is totally fine to have before blood draws. There's no effect on test results. So unlike food, um, it's welcome and even encouraged to drink plenty of water before a blood draw. Um, for optimal hydration, you want to drink about three liters of water in the 24 hours prior to your blood draw. Um, the next thing you're going to want to do when you go for a blood draw is you're going to want to ensure you don't get cold. So you may have noticed that when you're cold, the veins in your hands and forearms tend to shrink up, get smaller, sometimes it even looks like they disappear. But when you're warm, if you're out in the heat or you're exercising, those veins in your hands and forearms tend to expand and come up towards the surface. This is actually your body's way of regulating temperature, but when you're in a cold doctor's office getting your blood drawn, it can really backfire. Um, the World Health Organization reports that wearing warm clothes, uh, wearing warm clothes uh, increases blood flow as much as sevenfold, substantially increasing your your chances of a successful cope. Um, so, dress warm. Bring a sweater, regardless of the weather outside. Um, it'll really help when it comes time for your blood draw. If you want to go a step further, um, you can apply heat to the inside of your arm with a heat pack while you wait in the lobby. The International Journal of Nursing Studies uh, reports that five minutes of holding a warm compress to your arm substantially increases the size of your veins and your chances of having a successful blood draw. The easier your veins are to find, the better your chances of a painless poke, which is always what we want. Um, the last thing is the easiest but most neglected way to prevent painting during a blood draw, and that's reclining back or laying down. Um, the Journal of Autonomic Neuroscience reports that elevating your feet to the same level or above your head substantially decreases your chances of your blood pressure dropping during a blood draw, which is the number one cause of painting during a blood draw. So, ask to be reclined back. 
Many times a phlebotomist, if they know you get, if they can see you're getting lightheaded, they'll go ahead and recline you back to stop or prevent those symptoms from getting worse. But if you have a history of fainting or lightheadedness, or even if you're just a little nervous, go ahead and ask to be reclined back. Um, it can stop those symptoms from popping up or occurring at all and leave you leaving the office feeling much healthier and happier. Um, a good phlebotomist will always recline you back if asked, and if they don't, it might be time to find somebody else to draw your blood. Um, blood draws can be scary. Um, they're totally safe, but they can come with some, some wonky side effects for some of us. Um, so remember to hydrate, stay warm, and recline back or lay down. Um, follow these steps, and I guarantee you'll have a safer and smoother blood draw experience. Thank you.